Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by CoolSomething.com, Mana Traders, as well as Twitch subs and Patreon supporters just like you. My name is Evan Irwin, and get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Power Dragon. What's up everybody? It's been a hell of a week. We've had a lot of weird things related to magic, so this should be a fun show. Some, some weird ones. Ruben Bressler. Yeah, this, yeah, this feels like an old episode back when we had a lot of drama every week. This weirdly We're, feels like an episode from like 2016, you know? Yeah, I would say the, the drama's been been running pretty hot these past uh, few days. So yeah. uh, that said, if you missed our pre-show where we talk about all sorts of weird stuff like wrestling timelines and Counter-Strike BS, patrons and subs this channel can get access to that extended stuff early. We kick it off with our first pick and our promo code reminder. Go to CoolStuffInc.com, use the promo code MAGICMIKE, save 5% off anything in the store, support the show, you using that supports us directly. Please and thank you. We love you, everybody. Tell them we sent you, which is great. And uh, we'll pick your favorite streamer, and we'll do it this time. I think we forgot, or I forgot last week, uh, with your suggestions <laughs> at the end of the show to see who we raid tonight. Thanks to our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Our first pick here has to be the wonder that is Mystery Booster 2. This showed up kind of out of nowhere-ish at Gen Con, and... Uh, Gavin's spoken of it over the years and like writing down notes for Mystery Booster 2 or whatever, but nothing ever sort of official. There was no kind of it's going to be released here. It was a very hush hush. By the way, Mystery Booster 2, here's some packs, here's some sealed events, and everything kind of went crazy. I mean, my the main issue I have here is one, there was no reason to keep it super secret. I mean, it's it's fine but they wanted a surprise right they wanted something exciting or whatever sure but i mean even at gen con it's weird to have that be a surprise just make it public and then just sell the crap out of it you know but why is it not available at retail right that's the thing because we saw how crazy yeah. the first one went people loved it everybody drafted people are still sitting on boxes used for later right just run it back and make more money. Make everybody happy. Now, I would know, and, and like, A, the company line, as I understand it, on that is that this is for conventions. This came out of a convention budget. It wouldn't have happened if they're not doing this at conventions, yada, yada, yada. But also, as I recall, feel free to correct me, all, but the first Mystery Booster started out the exact same way. Yep. And in fact, there wasn't even a festival in a box thing at mm -hmm. the very beginning because it began in, what, 2019, wasn't it? Yep. So back then, the best one in the box didn't happen because the world didn't end yet. And then the world ended, and they said, okay, here's a way you can get it for yourself. That still exists. And then after a while, they started sending those boxes to like premier stores. Like they would just get some. Like they'd show up, and you could go, you could draft them or whatever, sell them, do whatever you want with them. Hell, they, they made a, if I remember right, they made a printing of that just for retailers during the pandemic. So right. they could like, Retailers did whatever the activity was, plus filled out a survey or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you got, I think it was like two or three boxes or whatever. Yeah, the, right. So they're popular enough that they were a major reward for retailers at one right. point. I also think that this wouldn't, in general, be a huge deal. Um, the first Mystery Booster, to me, was like 95%. This is a reward for coming to live events, mm -hmm. right? We were encouraging people to come back out of their caverns and yeah. join us in the public eye again. Uh, and this was a nice little way to show our appreciation with these weird little in-jokes that some of the cards, and this is the part that isn't the 95%, blew up in price. Oh, yeah. Right? And pharmacists judge note that the retail version didn't have playtest cards. Right. Which was that's the that's what and people that's hated. why those blew up in price. Right? That's also was why they like blew up. Yeah. Sliv Drazi Monstrosity and Niv Slizit or whatever the other sliver one was right. hit like a hundred and twenty dollars or something ridiculous. Right. And people in casual want to have those cards. So that was the downside then. We do have another added thing with these mystery boosters, which is the new frames. Yes. And the new printings yes. and the new versions of tournament legal cards. Yes. Hell, we've got so, arena cards. We have arena yeah. online have alchemy only, cards. Alchemy that arena are now cards. In paper. 
Like, I love the Future Sight frame. I love the white border. I love the Future Sight frame. I think the white border is absolutely genius. Like, we have the game, the, the Dreamcast card. Like, for what it's worth, I, there's no Chandelar, as I understand it. And I'm expecting Chandelar cards to be like a Mystery Booster 3. They got to hold back a little something. Um, but a ton of cards that were online only, that uh, three mana 5-5 five, five on Arena, that you discarded a card or whatever, uh, yep. that, was, that now exists. Um, and yeah, just a ton of really cool, interesting ways to do it. Um, the Sensei's Divining Top of the Future Sight frame, I think is brilliant. Leyline of the Void with the white borders. Now look, I think the white border thing seems weirdly, I don't know, uh, argumentative. A lot of people get about it. I think it's a really great idea, a silly I callback, and I love it. I don't, I don't get where the hate's coming from. I love it. Uh, the best one, and the one that I imagine is going to be the most expensive, is the Urza Lord High Artificer with the Future Sight frame using the Vanguard art. Oh, it's so good. It's gorgeous. Uh, it is the one of the most also, beautiful magic cards I've ever seen. Mox Poison. Uh, Mox Poison. Yeah, that is yep, pretty that cool. That one will go the roof as well, for sure. Now, all right, so riddle me this. This is the real question for me. Is Mystery Booster the new Unsets? That's a great question. Because there's been no new unsets. They haven't announced any in a while. The last one didn't like suck or anything, but I think what it we're seeing did. here a little bit. Well what I, it didn't sell <laughs> it, it sold pretty well because they put the shock lens in it and stuff. But in terms of like these are crazy new ideas, they're wild and wacky as hell. They are clearly like not black bordered magic as the unsets always kind of meant to be. And I, th this what this just feels like our new unsets. And in a way, there's multiple in, mechanics that show up here that later show up in real cards, right? I I would say, the like that's probably the closest comparison. But the thing we can do with these mystery boosters is real cards are in there, right? Like mm -hmm. with the unsets, we really never got real cards. Now one or two because we made the weird rule that some of them could be tournament legal, whatever. Sure. So like maybe a handful of them actually became real real cards. We'll say. But you actually have a lot of quality reprints in the mystery booster stuff. So, like, it can sell like a regular set while people are chasing stuff. And you just happen to get one or two of these quirky cards every pack. So, like, I think it still fills the void where if R&D wants to do fun, goofy things, just shove it in there, right? And you still have a thing that sells forever. Because that was always a thing, even now, with having the shock lands and whatever, you know, the space lands or whatever you want to call them. The Spock lands, I guess we'll call the shock lands, whatever. Mm -hmm. But being being in that set, the set doesn't really sell much anymore. But no. you'll still move mystery boosters. Oh yeah, you they'll know? still move. And uh, and from from what it's worth, uh, mystery booster is the bane of a lot of card shops because we have to make fourteen hundred unique items. Yep. Uh, at least they put a set code and a little set symbol. Which was very much appreciated because just seeing that little tiny planeswalker mark or whatever was often very much not enough to oh, uh, stop missorting. Especially when they were doing the same thing for the list. So then you had to like Ooh. double check things because you couldn't just look for an expansion symbol or for the yeah. planeswalker symbol anymore. Yeah. Right? That so, was silly. So that was that, that was a leap in, in the right direction. And I just, again, my favorite part about these, and again, this is what it feels so much of an unset for me, is that I feel like a lot of these cards are just, they're literally like play testing cards, quote unquote, with the public. They're showing, hey, yeah. these are some wacky new mechanics we're gonna have in the future. We're not gonna tell you they are, but you're gonna get to play with them. They're gonna get to see you experience them and hear your your thoughts on them and so on, just like you would a play test. And they don't have to tell you that, you know? And I just, I, I love that. I think that's brilliant. You know, I think now that I'm thinking about it, like what's the need for this to be a convention only product? There's no need. They're just other than they say. Yeah, because I'm like, no Wizard is always going to sell a ton of product at everything if they want to, right? That's you're going to run a ton of booster drafts. Like, you're going to run a ton, ton of sealed stuff. You're going right. to have all these big events. So, like, are you recouping some small percentage more money for the cost of the show? Like, sure, but all that's budgeted for anyway. So it's I, like, I there's think no the, need for this to have to be just for conventions. Right. I think the, you know, if, if I'm in the room, right, and, and it's my argument to sell this, you know, I think the argument is... Uh, you put more butts in seats when you have unique events that feature products you can only get at those events. Okay. Now, my, our, my the, the, on the other side of the argument, I would say, I don't think those conventions, those magic cons, whatever, would get any less people if this existed in retail Correct. and at conventions. That is the argument that I just, I don't see some that, that fights against that. It makes a lot of sense. 
like Magic Con Vegas is probably going to be sold out, right? We no already see a bunch do. of events and stuff selling out already, right? Without something like a, a Mystery Booster Two being available, correct? So it's like you don't, you just don't need it. It's not really even an issue. Hell, and even at that, if you have the Lotus badge or whatever, they had that special event. Anyway, for them, that's like a R and D plane chase, whatever quirky thing mm -hmm. that you can only do at that event with special plane chase cards, and then you still have the mystery Gavin event or whatever it is. Sure. Like again, I'm just you know, I'm just trying to imagine a world in which you know it it we needed that mystery booster to be there, or otherwise the event was not going to go off the way they wanted. And I just no. I just don't see a world where that's true. I just hell they had 400 events <laughs> scheduled for Gen Con. I think is what the number was. For magic so it's like you were gonna be fine without that one i'm you pretty were gonna sure. be okay it's just mm -hmm. and again but you know if this is what lets you know gavin Verhey and a lot of the design team kind of go nuts and sure. just you know throw out the craziest idea they can think of because it'll be fun and wacky and silly to see people react to it let's go you know what i mean and and to be fair that could be the other argument right they say okay in the first so many months of after what we print we need to make x amount of dollars to justify the hours or whatever that went into putting this together. And if that's the case, sure, run it as convention only for the first four months or five months, whatever, then make it available to retailers. Like, that's fine, too. Absolutely. Um, you know, is it uh, someone mentioned everyone get Conspiracy 3? I don't know. Battle Bond 3? That would also be nice, you know? Battle Bond, I could see more likely than Conspiracy. And that's I fair. Think. Particularly in a world where... You want to push more casual things. Um, yeah, that's a I think the problem with conspiracy, oriented. though, and I saw it recently where somebody got a pack as part of like a some type of mystery box thing. And they were kind of confused because they had stuff that only did something in draft. Yeah. You know, so it's just like it was weird having like three or four cards that just literally don't do anything. They're just right. bad they, like they three threes working or whatever. after uh, the draft. Yeah. Although, to be fair, I do have a deal broker in one of my commander decks. Well, <laughs> fair. I would say, like, Pharmacist Judge, I think is correct. They say battle bonding conventions will do well. 2HG does well at conventions, which yeah, it absolutely. does. Yeah. Like, do a absolutely. battle bond convention edition or whatever. Go nuts. Yeah. Like, that's cool because it's not sort of like just a Mystery standalone product. Bond. Right. It's it's also like it's bringing together people for a very specific type of event. Whereas Mystery Booster, yes, we're drafting. But, like, there's something unique about 2 Headed Giant in a way that you play Magic in no other way. Sure. Um, I think I, there I are think ways that, that they can combine those things together. We can go Mystery Battle Bond. We can go ba Un Battle Bond. We can go mm -hmm. Un Mystery. And you know, then, some battle bond cards also have good mechanics in Commander. We're like, hey, you want to yeah. help me pay for this? Oh, yeah. So that like, we can get rid of something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think, you know, just in terms of like what product would make more sense to me, like I love Mystery Booster because I think it's really cool for the ideas. Sure. But in terms of like bringing people together, give them an event to play in, wrap it in with what conventions are all about, battle bond would be really awesome. Um, so either way, let's go ahead and move our way on here through uh, from the first pick to gather the townsfolk. Thanks to our sponsor, Mana Traders, the best tool to enhance your magic online experience. Use the code MagicMikes underscore eight n four eight November four for ten percent off your next subscription with them. Tell them we sent you. Gather the townsfolk where we talk about stuff in the community. What's going on? Well, they gave us a little more information about Magic the Gathering Foundations, which, in fact, you can pre-order right now on CoolStuffInc.com. Use promo code MagicMikes. Uh, and with that said, uh, there's a few interesting products. First of all, there are no Commander decks, which, huh. considering they made Commander decks for, you know, everything, including and Modern, Modern Horizons design. 3, yeah, okay. Yeah. So the fact they're not doing that is kind of incredible. Um, sure. And and again, this is the, the set that they want to be like the base set of base sets. It's going to be here for quote unquote up to four years and or more. Five years. Smart, five years. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, and it's going to be legal and standard until at least 2029. That, what's going to happen in 2028? Like where, who buys these boosters in 2028? I got to know. Because there are play boosters, there are also collector boosters, and those collector boosters by 2028, long gone. Those are going to be in oh, the yeah, rear yeah. view. Those are going to be stories you told about opening them years ago. Like, holy cow. Uh, but they are bringing back Jumpstart. Jumpstart boosters for Foundation. Now, And that, this is a fine product to have Jumpstart in. Yeah, I, right. I think it, if you're going to have it, this is one of the spots where it makes sense. For sure. Don't power it down, and you'll be fine. 
Because right. when they tried that set jump start with only like six combinations or whatever, absolute disaster. Well, but this they... isn't a set jump start, right. right? Because this is not a set. Right. Foundations is designed to persist for half a decade. So I'm I I agree that Jumpstart is perfect for this. It is exactly the kind of pick up and play, learn how magic works kind of uh, product to be able to teach your friends and family. Yeah, and you've got, you know, I'll bring it up here on the screen so you guys can check it out. Um, they have, you know, the Jumpstart boosters now have 46 possible Jumpstart themes, which they should. That's the number that you want to see around. You don't want to see, like, I think six or something or eight. 46? Yeah. Is that 46 combinations? That's it. Well, 46 themes, it says. Oh, right? God. So it'll be wow. you know, unicorns and knights and elves. That's and... a ton. That's a ton. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a 46 times 45 possible combinations. Like, if the number had been 12 to 16, I would have been fine. Like, yeah, that's still 144 combinations. It's got to last five years, is folks. huge. Five years, 46 folks. is huge. Five that's years. a huge number. Yeah, but I wouldn't expect a lot of people to play or buy jumpstart more than a handful of times anyway i mean this like, is arguably one of your beginner products this isn't for sure, your yeah, ingrown absolutely or ingrained pro player um or it's just or it's, you it's a, a quick i think about it experience. as a reacquisition product that it's good for sure yeah. like people that played before but they just want to check it out and don't want to buy a whole new deck like right. cool let's grab four packs and we can sit around and play yeah. absolutely uh the beginner box is new which is interesting uh, contains 10 packs made up of cards from Foundations, keeping the gameplay simple and fun for the new peeps. Um, 10 themed Jumpstart packs are in there, uh, which are interesting. And just again, just the idea that we have a beginner box, which we don't have. I mean, know. it's a bundle with a different name. Sure. Is it though? <laughs> hey man, we're spinning it, man. We're spinning it. I got you. I mean, I'm we're fine with it. that. But uh, but yeah. I get it. We're just branding it a little bit different. That's all. It's, it's a bundle, you know. By the way, though, sweet color scheme. I think this product, as far as like Beautiful. visually, oh, it, it does look way gorgeous. better on a shelf than a lot of Magic product does. Yeah, agreed. Colors are great. Uh, and a starter collection, which again is kind of a bundle with a different name. We don't talk about it. It's got a mm -hmm. cool spin down, and that's impressive. That uh, actually is. People will buy it for that, I'm sure. Also, this combination of colors. I want to go back to this. The the way it looks on the shelf uh, appeals not only because of the hot pink, hot blue. But, which, by the way, Neon Dynasty also used that combo, and I also loved. It's true. Um, but, uh, and then I think Capenna also had that combo. I just like those colors together. Sure. But also uh, appeals to the sort of like eSports kind of crowd. It's not a, this is a magic product that doesn't look like a magic product, effectively. Like, this is a magic product designed to get outsiders to buy it. It, it doesn't look overly high fantasy right i think is the thing uh interesting note here they do know you can open foil jap japan showcase cards whatever that's supposed to be uh mana foils whatever that's supposed to be uh i love these like little hints of product types mana foils i don't know that one does that mean I don't know. we may not have had some of these revealed yet yeah. Oh, no, no. I don't think we've gotten actually like what these mean. They're just product descriptions and what you sure. can infer, uh, which is a fun, fun experience. And we do have actual factual bundles. As, oh, as so the bundle is just like a worse. Uh, it's just the same beginner box gotten, now. Right. It's just it's yeah. a beginner box with less like beginner pieces. But it comes with one less pack and you don't get the play mat and stuff. Right, 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 right. Uh, and they'll cheaper. have pre-releases uh, for this as well as it's coming cool. uh, on uh, November 15th. As when it's Do they say how many cards are in the set yet? Uh, I don't know if anyone has read that. Because I don't detail. remember seeing that anywhere. And I only thing I find is like varying numbers of that is going to be 50-50 old cards, new cards. I believe that was said on their stream at one point. <laughs> I don't recall but, them saying that. but uh, Yeah, but I don't know that possible. we have an actual number of cards, which right. is interesting. Hmm. Yeah, and it, again, it's just it's, it's wild because to have talked with R&D members and to know... Oppressive is not the right word, but to understand that you will always have land of elves out there mm -hmm. means that you can't make your three drop three card th green mana cards, uh, you know, too good, like too overly anything because that's going to exist now for five years, right? Or everything else has to keep up with that. Yeah, it's fine though. We're gonna have multiple four mana wraths and the format for a long time anyway. So. Yeah, well, day of judgment till the cows come home. It'll be. Uh, and the other one from. Uh... Uh, Thunder Junction. 
there's one. Yeah, final countdown or whatever it was, final showdown, something rather. No, that was the one that has the spree ability. There's yeah, another yeah. four mana one. Oh. No more somethings. I can't remember what it is. Fair enough. Uh, but <clears throat> either way, I think that, again, the product I think is really super rad. I'm just, I'm, you know, concerned. You know, the, sure. when something's new and weird, I, I want it to be great. Let's make it be great. I hope it's great. Yeah, uh, I don't I think it's going to be cool. Something speaking I'm, of hoping things are great. Thinking of hoping things are great. Look, man, uh, many, many years ago, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far, uh, I was head of Star City Games marketing department, and we were building what would become SCG Live, which became a live streaming arm of the tournament series. And uh, as we would learn over time, uh, for example, uh, we should have people in suits. That was the thing that we didn't kind of default to. We tried to buy people shirts. That was a whole other issue of people didn't like how they look like mechanics or something, and that was a whole thing. Um, but it was also trying to finding the right commentators, the right people to do the play-by-play -play and to do the analysis. And we put all sorts of people together. We put people together for even years, multiple seasons. And once upon a time, it, it came to be that I was able to hire Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan to be on the same broadcast. And it was absolutely magic. It, it was <laughs> it was incredible. Like their ability to play off of each other, to make what you saw was interesting, to give you a feel of what was going on in the game. And the fact that they are returning to magic the video coverage when Patrick, as I recall, did say he was done and out a couple years ago is pretty big news. In October 5th through 6th, there will be live coverage of the regional championship at Washington, D.C. Hey, bro, money talks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, we shall see. Uh, I am hopeful. I think that if they were going to bring it back, this is the way to bring it back. You bring it back with Cedric and Patrick and Corey and Ailey. Yeah. Uh, and this is, this is who we want doing this tournament uh, if we're not going to dip into newer talents. And I think that I, I am hopeful that they're going to dip into some newer talent uh, if these you know first couple months are successful in any way, shape, or form. Hmm. Um, you know, I think that Magic has missed SCG coverage. I think that SCG has missed having coverage for their events. I bet. Um, I am hopeful that whoever is driving the the boat, the the whoever's in charge of the the department, uh, steers it correctly this time. Um, I would like I would I would dislike for it to go away the way that it went away last time in sort of a whimper kind of situation. Um, but I'm hopeful. I think that this is this is a a, a really strong sign and a strong opportunity for us to be back to uh to big coverage like highlight event kind of stuff yeah i think no don't be wrong like this team is good a good good choice of people for sure and i've been like enough to work with cedric and Corey multiple times and like they're fantastic so no problem with that but i think just coverage as a whole coming back is a big deal right like, for sure i don't think people even realize you have a a swath of players who only know a handful of events that have coverage, right? They don't. They don't come from the time where every single big event had somebody covering it, yeah, right? Every, every whether, whether it was every yeah, weekend. whether it was a store, whether it was Wizards, whether it was some organizer, whatever. Somebody had coverage on something. Hell, sometimes multiple times a week we had competing events. Yep. We were switching before between channels, right? Yeah, literally, SCG and GPS would happen on the same weekend with both yeah. having coverage. So it's a big thing, I think, which will take people some time to get readjusted to like getting used to looking for coverage being on because it's not really a thing like i've gotten lucky to be able to do the arena championship coverage for the last five i think and people are sometimes surprised that like oh there's actually it's actual tournament going on with actual like coverage right they're expecting you're just going to see something on the wizards channel it's like oh no there's actual like people talking about the games so it's like still a surprise that we even have it for some people so yeah, it'd be cool to see this come back, and I and I hope it works for him, so we get more of it. True. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and to not downplay Alias V or Corey Baumeister, who are fantastic personalities who do a for great sure. job. Like this is you know again they they win in like this is money, yeah. this is investment, this is like we are seriously trying to bring this back in the way that you guys were interacting and 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 re, re, reacting to it those years for ago. Sure. So 
So let's go. Corey, Corey's my boy. He's one half of Team Powerbomb, by the way. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty good. And, and, Power, and a new dad. Bomb. Hashtag yeah. MBG and dads. And dad, yep. Well, and Ailey, true. I think a, of the four Ailey of them, I think baby. Ailey is the one who is at the top of her game the most. Uh, you know, she, she came out of relative obscurity compared to the other three mm -hmm. uh from a from a magic scene kind of standpoint yeah. but catapulted to the upper echelon a team of of commentary so i'm most excited for, for she, her to get this opportunity and she does keep her skill sharp because she does some streaming she's got sure. a youtube channel like so she's pretty on top of it yeah she puts yeah. in the work and um moving on here a little bit we are talking about the uh well, actually, moving on to Desperate Ravings, where we get to rant and rave about things that happen in the community and to magic in general. There's a rebalance, y'all, in Historic. And it's already happened. That's this is already a thing. I've already gotten my uh, rebalanced versions in Arena. And uh, if you check it out here, they changed Galvanic Discharge to generate two energy instead of three. Guide of Souls now needs four energy instead of three. And Ocelot Pride costs two mana, a white and generic mana, instead of one one white mana and that last one was like man if only they could fix a ragavan am i right because this is ragavan-esque type of stats pushing to this level uh of course you can still play these cards in timeless as they are printed because that that format's insane um but yeah the, the red white energy deck is a serious issue and they're doing their best to get to get it under control but we still didn't ban anything. Still didn't ban nothing. Yeah, not for, I mean, not for Arena. Arena, uh, they can change it, right? I mean, is that the best way to do it? I don't know. I mean, they might ban stuff in paper. They'll still. ban stuff in paper. Oh, yeah, uh, we, but we got to wait, what, two more weeks? Uh, Three yeah, more we weeks? we got to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> I, I think that it is a good bellwether. It's a harbinger of future things to come. Uh, we may see a ban on either uh, Souls or Discharge. Um, I don't imagine we'll see a ban on ocelot pride but we could uh these are all options still on the table now let me let me throw down and, and let me uh admit uh that i don't know all the things about all the things and i'm happy to admit when i'm wrong and when i get something wrong and when i legitimately was like just from the rafters last week that nadu is going to hurt tournament attendance well there was a regional qualifier and a cool stuff game store and it had very good attendance. I think over 50 people showed up for the modern format event. And no one invested in Nadu. Two people brought Nadu. Mm. Two. Wow. And it did not win the event, as I understand it. And I don't know how, even if it did very well. But when you had a whole room of people and only two of them decided to bring what you could arguably be, like the most busted so-and-so, I'm happy to eat the crow and say maybe it's, you know, the sky isn't falling. And maybe Nadu is a thing that we can't adjust to, but also maybe on the very top end of the echelon, it's still too good. Yeah. I mean, I think that both things can be true, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, local I, you know, player bases made us reject it, period. Yeah. I think that it is not long for this world still. I'm, I'm glad to see that the community has sort of had a gentleman's agreement. Basically, uh, it sounds like. Is what it sounds like to me. Um, but yeah, that, that's not sustainable. Yeah. But I just want to bring it up as again, I'm happy to these counterpoints of, you know, yo dude, you yelled about so-and-so and yet the event had good attendance and Nadu wasn't everywhere. Okay. That's, that's a, that's a point on the graph. All right. Uh, we can talk about that. Uh, all right. Speaking about things that people get a little upset about, there was a note this week about magic and wizards have a ambassador program. You sign up, you make certain amounts of content, you, you provide them certain amounts of, uh, you know, uh, social media activity and so on. Um, and and you're you're in the, the cool kids club. And I'm not exactly sure what the what the benefits are, but they don't appear to be a lot of free product because there was a little gnashing of teeth. The people who weren't ambassadors were getting, you know, here here's a half a case and here's a bunch of collector boosters and whatever, you know, you, please, please like us. And then the people who are ambassadors don't get it. And this is where we also have to rec recognize that platforms are platforms. And mm -hmm. in our new reality, it's not just a social media account. It is a social media platform. You don't have to foster it. You don't have to try to grow it. But if you have fostered it and you have grown it, you're going to get a lot of benefits from those who didn't. I, it, it's just kind of the way it works. 
Yeah, I trying to think of how I can speak about this without. We don't want to be insulting, right? Like, yeah, yeah, but I, I don't want to. People work for their stuff. I guess. Yeah, I don't want to sully anybody's name or anything like that. That's not what this is about. Right. But the program, I think, going into it, people had some expectations that weren't ever actually said. Hmm. You know, I think some people are like, "Oh, I'm going to join this thing. I'm going to get this boost, and there's going to be all this other stuff." Right. And it's like, well, you still have to do the work yourself. Right. Like, no matter what brand partner you work with, whether it's Withers, whether it's Elgato, whether it's Logitech, whatever, right, you still have to do the bulk of the work yourself. Like, they'll help re reshare some of your stuff or boost it up a little bit, but, like, you, right. you still got to do the bulk of the work. And then I think also for Wizards, it was still, we went in knowing it was a test program, right? There was no guarantee of longevity. There's no guarantee of you know, what the, the outcome was going to be. It was just like, hey, here's the first, whatever it was. I think it was like 80 people. It was a pretty big number because they got people of all different sizes them, yeah. and whatever. And I think some of that was also for Wizards to be able to test just like, okay, how much growth can we see from a smaller creator versus a bigger creator or men or women or whoever, right? And then they got their year's worth of numbers and then they came back and kind of revamped the program, I would say. And now it's like paid activations. Hmm. But you know they'll they'll pick people from various pools, but it's not you're not guaranteed anything. Mm -hmm. You know so, and I think that's where people started to feel bad because we got used to the guarantee, and then it was like, oh well, I'm not just getting stuff anymore, right? Or right. I'm not not getting picked for things or whatever. And I will say there was some communication issues at one point, so people were in the dark for probably a better part of like three and a half four months of like during the transition mm -hmm. of what's actually going to happen or whatever. And that's a real feel bad, right? Mm -hmm. When you don't know what's going on and as a creator, people are already self-conscious and concerned and, you know, so that that kind of let people's brain goblins just go crazy. Right. So, like, I get that part totally. But, you know, once it was all laid out, it's like, okay, this is the reality of the situation. It's a whole different program now. And that's fine, too. You know, it's totally okay. Yeah. Like, and I being an ex, I guess, ex-ambassador, ambassador, whatever they're calling the new thing, like... I haven't gotten free product in months, but I've also gotten to do some commercials for MTG Arena that they share around the internet, and they paid me for it. So, which is right, uh, you know, so you yeah. get those opportunities, right? It's about yeah, right. It's about an opportunity. It's also about them having sort of a database and of creators that they can rely on, depending on what they're trying to do and or accomplish at the time. Like these are sure. all. You know, these are all things like, you know, they're slicing and dicing them as they need to. Um, you know, if you want to be the most cynical, it was about stopping people from criticizing because you couldn't disparage sure. if you were a part of the thing. I, I don't think that was true, but like it's this is a standard agreement. And why would they do that if you're going to disparage yeah. and so on? None of that makes sense. So so it, it, so it looks like it looks like uh, my cursory search here. A former ambassador can continue to be called uh, sir or madam ambassador uh or excellency so uh oh, your okay. excellency i'm gonna uh, use that <laughs> former former and his or My her excellency, excellency yes uh or mr or madam ambassador <laughs> can continue to be used awesome. um wow. there is also are an argument to be made for emeritus that's uh, true emeritus is a good one emeritus mm -hmm. for when like when you retire for example sheldon was the judge emeritus yeah. for a long time Deans and professors at colleges are emeritus professors. Uh, so you may be an emeritus ambassador. You know, let me say this, though, about the program from Wizards perspective. I think this was also like. Let us put money to just creators in our space. Yeah. And see what this is worth. Right. Sure. Right. Because up to that point, it hadn't really been done. Like they were picking up people here or there and they'd right. appear on a thing. But, you know, it was usually like the bigger known creators. But it wasn't a program that they can like yeah. put an umbrella yeah. over and say, here's the stats in our program. Right. Good, it, was, it was an exploratory committee. Yeah. It was an adventure, but it didn't have it wasn't ever going to be long for this world. Because you didn't have hard and fast numbers backed up by statistics. I also think, especially for the smaller to mid creators, and I'm I'm like mid upper slightly, I guess, compared to others. But I, I think there was a lot of like not understanding what you still have to put into this to kind of keep it a thing. Yeah. You know, like at some point, they're not going to keep giving you stuff for free if you're not helping move their needle. Right. Yeah. If they can go to one of the other creators and say, hey, here's two cases of product, open some up and do some giveaways for us. And they see a thousand new followers on their YouTube channels or whatever. It's like, well, which one's worth the money? You know, yeah, at, at the end of tough. the day. 
And that's yeah. tough when you're a lower echelon creator trying to make it For big sure. and they throw you into the pit and it's like, you know, get yeah. us numbers. And, and it's like, I, well, I'm doing what I can, but. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and I've been not, not to sort of an ambassador program, but certainly, you know, cool stuff has went through periods of growth where I'm able to bring a bunch of creators in and there's periods of, of uncomfortable conversations and I got to let some people go or stop some sponsorships and I hate doing that. But it's all about it's all about the metrics. I, it, whether yeah, I think the are, thing you, is, are you helping move dollars? Yeah, don't right. don't try to take it as personal. I think is the don't way. take it personally. It's all business. Oh, definitely. That's not. the that's I, the I think that issue. was the biggest push for me was to, for them to realize for those who were like sort of upset, like hey, they don't they're not like screw this person. You know, it's never that. It's right. just I need X or Y, and these are the metrics I need to hit. These are the people and or the outfit that we think can get us there. That's why they do those things. Um, so let's get into the let's get into the real drama meat. Yeah, this week. All right, fine. Uh, so there was an event at Gen Con where uh, the first place prize was arguably forty to fifty thousand dollars. A one yeah. of four dark rituals that exist on the planet. There were some prizes for second and so on, but when you're talking like fifty k at first, the rest don't really matter that much. And uh, someone, a, a gentleman named uh, Julian. Uh, Jakobovitz. Jakobovitz, I think is that the way you say it. Yeah. Um, yeah, they go by Juju Bean, I think, online. Yeah, Juju Bean 2004 on uh, X slash Twitter. And uh, it was 32 player event, single elimination. You had to go 5 0 to get that thing. And it tells a story of judges nearby hearing talk about selling equity. This is where someone says, I'll give you. I'll give you a hundred bucks for 10% of anything you win in this event or this weekend or whatever. It's very popular in poker. It's not seen as much in magic because our prizes aren't usually large enough to care about that. But 10% yeah. of that prize is 4,500 or $5,000. Then it gets worth it to invest money and so on. Anyway, he had kind of alluded about his friend asking about selling this or whatever and then he wasn't clearly explaining when the judge was talking to him what they were talking about. And the next thing you know, he's DQ'd and everything sucks and so on. And so we have one side of the story. And as I understand it, at least sort of as this broadcast was beginning, we got some amount of the other side of the story. And then there'll be the truth somewhere in the middle. And as long as I've seen these things, as many times as I've seen this happen, and Lord knows we have, it is often something and or a few things are not included in this rundown from the one side of the scenario, whatever it may be, something someone did, the way they acted, what they said versus what they wrote they said, and so on and so forth. And so it's easy to paint it as this kid got royally screwed for nothing and they didn't do anything wrong. They clearly didn't do anything wrong as you would read in these things. And so we'll see how it goes. But right now the outrage machine was, you know, how dare they, you can't really make it up. You're not going to be able to get another dark ritual or whatever to provide this person. You know, don't go after judges and whatever. That's weird and, and terrible. Don't yeah. You know, but ultimately things like this happen and we've seen it before. We've seen it in Pokemon, you know, not alone, just magic. Uh, of yeah. People get big feelings hurt and it sucks. Yeah. I will uh, say, yeah, go, ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Evan. Or no. Ruben. No, go, you go first. I'm still okay. doing I was, I was just going to say like, the one of the issues that you know dq aside yeah because there's a lot of he you said know, she said still pharmacist judge don't he wasn't dq'd he was match lost right i was going to clarify well, yeah. that. So that is worth clarifying thank you yeah i i think part of the problem too though is the structure of this tournament right because i always question that when i look at events like when you have such top heavy payouts yeah you kind of encourage negative behavior or at least negative within the scope of the event, right? Right, because it's so high, where second place is effectively getting nothing. I mean, like you're getting something, but like compared to the fifty k worth of cards or whatever, right? Right, like it's it's just not comparable. And I've always felt that was an issue. Even when I see when I played poker and stuff, and you'd see like first prize is a hundred thousand dollars and second is like twenty five. It's like why why wouldn't you organize some type of split, right? Like I mean, like. Right. It's insane to take that gamble if if you're within any reasonable margin of chip stacks, right? right? Kind of the same thing here. It's like, well, why wouldn't you do now? We all know there are ways to do it, ways to not do it. So <laughs> like those of us been around a minute. But ways to say it, ways then, to not say it. Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't yeah. be I'm gonna go use the restroom. 
Yeah, like it shouldn't be encouraging that type of behavior. I think the payout should be somewhat flatter or just increased, right? If first is 50,000 and second is 20,000 equivalent or whatever, or 25, sure. well, all right, it feels bad, but you're still getting a significant amount and it's not that yeah. terrible. But when you're talking multiple thousands versus a couple of booster boxes or whatever, like that that's a vast valley, you right. know, and it encourages that kind of behavior. So, yeah, uh, I, uh, as we've been talking, uh, a couple of folks who are in the judge community and the events coordination community have come forward with their statements on the issue. Uh, primarily, they are saying it is not our policy to comment, but because this became a thing and we have received a couple of uh, less than stellar responses uh, leading to some harassment we felt the need to make some comments. There was an official comment from Pastimes Events. There was an official comment from the, uh, the head of events for uh, for Pastimes, who was the person who levied the eventual match loss to clarify what had occurred. Um, there's a number of moving parts here, and it gets into details that I'm not sure that even we on this show have the time or the patience to get into, mm -hmm. but trust that the referees and officials have done their due diligence here and that the information is available. Uh, if you wish to find the statements written from pastimes uh, or from Meg, Meg Baum, who was the, uh, the head of events at Gen Con, uh, those are available online. Mm -hmm. Basically, it breaks down to this. The there was no discovery of cheating uh, that could be proven in any meaningful way. So there was no disqualification from the event and there will be no follow up from Wizards of the Coast looking for cheating. However, there was a breach of the code of the tournament structure. You can only do prize splits if all three of the following things are true, according to the bylaws of Wizards of the Coast and Magic the Gathering. The players are in single elimination rounds. The prize is only in cash, store credit, prize tickets, or unopened product, and the TO allows it. If all three of those things aren't true, you cannot prize split. Uh, in this case, it seems as though there was discussion previous to the single elimination rounds, and it is unclear whether the TO allowed any sort of prize splitting. Right? So... Uh, it seems pretty cut and dried to me based on the ground rules that a match loss for for that uh, uh, breach of the contract was levied. In this particular tournament, that effectively knocked them out of the top four. And, and no. they got top four prizes, whatever that may have been, and then we all moved on with our lives. So I understand why this player feels frustrated and angry, and I would too. This is a huge amount of money to be playing for. For sure. But and pharmacist judge notes they definitely said no split. They repeated okay. it multiple times. Well, there and you go. If they're clear about that, you I mean, again, you're if you're if you're playing for what you would describe yourself as life changing money, what why would you ever get anywhere close to something that would put you out of contention for that? And so their excuse was I like wasn't listening to my friend or whatever. But like they also kind of you know explain what equity splits were and they knew what equity splits were. Sure. And people know how prize splits work in big events. And you know if you've played any high level events, hell, I would split the top eight of PTQs. You know what I mean? So we could get some boosters for everybody. Like, and this is that's nothing compared to this. So like, absolutely, man. And you got to be crazy, crazy careful. Um, and maybe again, this is just another example of you know what what happened to the person who was too careful? Nothing. That that's yep. Oh. So, if you're ever unsure, just call the judge. Call the judge. Don't just bring it or start talking about it or bring it up with your opponent. Like, no, 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 no. Just say, hey, I got a question. Um, yep. All right. So uh, I think we're just going to move ahead here and turn the corner to the finisher. Wonderful. And the Gen Con Championship Top 8 Cube Draft got kicked out of Gen Con at closing time. So they had to walk to a nearby game store to finish it. Now, we've all finished tournaments at weird times and places that make a game store look downright luxurious. So tell me, what's the strangest, the strangest <laughs> spot you've entered your tournament time? The most iconic and memorable tournament finish 
I can recall was watching the top two of a PTQ finishing things out in the lobby of a hotel after the event's ballroom had closed, which was perfect because between guests checking in and uh, checking in last minute and players fighting for a pro tour slot, there were not a lot of vacancies available for the competitors. Nice. 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 Game. Yeah, so I've seen events host their final games at Mexican restaurants, YMCA's, IHOPs. But the one that sticks out the most is playing an event at the Texas Motor Speedway in Ennis. Crazy. But it was actually pretty excellent because one thing that race car drivers and Magic players have in common is that they hate when events drag on. Drags on too long. Now, look, <laughs> memory that sticks out the most to me was the time a finals of a tournament was held on the trunk of a car outside a mall after getting kicked out of the event site, which was poetic because there's no better way to imagine a tournament than with a swift foot boot. Mm. <laughs> got them with the boot. They kicked you out and yep. they also tra played on the trunk of a car. You got a swift boot in the rear, is what you got. Swift that's right. Boot that's in the UK, call them boots. It's a whole that's thing. That's right. And that ends the live episode of Magic Mike's. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Power Dragon. Hey, it's always good to be here. And we got through a pretty crazy week. Good show. We did. Thank you, Ruben. Yeah, thanks for uh, a bunch of Raiders, I think, stuck around, too, which was really nice. Oh, uh, and and stick around again as we send you on to whoever the next people uh, end up being. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Absolutely. We'll move here to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com. Use the code MAGICMIKES as your promo code at checkout. Our co-sponsor, Mana Traders, my co-host, Power Dragon and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching and listening. Hope you support us at patreon.com slash magic mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us on our exclusive member Discord, live on twitch.tv at magic mics, live or taped on our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at magic mics cast, on TikTok at magic mics cast, or join us here next week. Same time, same place. Another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.